Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we will discuss crafting, dismantling and most importantly resource management. Each of these aspects is crucial and in this episode of the Into the Ranked Matches series we will go through each one step by step. We will explore the basic rules and if you requested expand them in future videos. Without further ado, let's begin. Crafting is one of the most important things you can do in every ranked match to make the most out of your weapons and finish the match as a winner. I've already made a video about crafting called How to Craft Weapons in Bonus WMD where I explain the process in details so check it out at the link in the description so I won't be repeating myself here. In this chapter we will focus on timing and give advices on when to craft which can be crucial in some cases. One of the best pieces of advice you can get about crafting is not to craft a weapon you won't use in your next turn. Experience will teach you that things change quickly and a weapon useful in the next turn can easily become irrelevant in the third or fourth one. Another general rule is to dismantle during your turn and craft during your opponent's turn. There are exceptions of course, but you'll get a clearer picture by the end of the video. Crafting weapons during your turn should be done with caution, especially if you plan to attack with the same weapon in your next turn. You should do this only when you're certain that the enemy wound cannot be moved or protected before you get a chance to strike. If this is not the case, wait and craft during your opponent's turn. However, you can always craft tools such as a parachute, drone or girder at any point during your turn and still have the chance to craft an offensive weapon during your opponent's turn if you see that you might need one. While you can craft a weapon at any point during your opponent's turn, you shouldn't always do it as soon as you get an idea for attack. For example, you don't want to craft a bunker buster and plan to kill a weak enemy warden from a distance if you're not sure you can do it once you get a chance to play. There are many things your opponent can do to prevent it before their turn ends. They can place an electromagnet or girder, move their worm beneath a vehicle, turret or mine, or teleport their worm to a safer part of the map. Sure, you can always cancel crafting, but sometimes you might not have enough time to do so. Crafting a weapon that you cannot use is often the worst thing you can do, especially in the end game. Things can change quickly, your opponent might apply a different strategy, and not having a your banana bomb seed ingredient for another advanced weapon can cost you a win in the end. For these reasons, you should wait and craft in the last few seconds of their turn, or during their retreat time if you see an opening for an attack. Plus, hearing a crafting sound from your opponent during your retreat time is one of the most stressful things a skilled player can experience. We've all been through that. Dismantling weapons is just as important as crafting them, especially in longer matches. You start every ranked match with a limited number of ingredients for crafting additional weapons, but you can always obtain more by dismantling those you might not need anymore. The process of dismantling a weapon is similar to crafting one, and I already covered this topic in the video I mentioned before, how to craft weapons in Worms WMD. The link is in the description. In this chapter, however, we will focus on timing and, most importantly, general tips for dismantling certain weapons in specific situations. The timing of dismantling weapons is not as strict as it is with crafting them. You can do it at any point during both your and your opponent's turns. However, sometimes you might want to wait and dismantle a weapon in the last few seconds of your opponent's turn or during their retreat time. The reason is simple, you might actually want to craft something based on their actions, and having to cancel the dismantling process first can cost you precious time. Not all weapons will give you the same amount of crafting ingredients. Some will give you just boogie special sauce, while others might give you the sticky donkey paste as well. Knowing which weapons provides which ingredients is important, but we will discuss this in more details in the next chapter. In this section of the third chapter, we will cover basic tactical choices for dismantling certain weapons in specific situations. Dismantling weapons that provide sticky donkey paste is not an easy decision, and knowing which one to dismantle is highly circumstantial. Many decisions must be made based on the unique situations of every single ranked match. There's no universal answer here, but through some examples you will get a clearer picture of what should be learned in this chapter. For example, you can dismantle a sheep and a baseball bat to get enough crafting ingredients to make a training shotgun if both your and your opponent's worms are on the opposite sides of the map. You may not be able to reach them with the sheep and baseball bat, but you can aim with high precision using the training shotgun and hit the enemy worm from any distance as long as no obstacle stands between the worms. The W1 rocket is useful only against worms in vehicles, and since many skilled players don't leave their worms inside vehicles at the end of their turns, dismantling the W1 rocket can be your first go-to weapon to obtain additional crafting ingredients. If both you and your opponent have one worm each, but yours is healthy, 
while there is not. You can dismantle the sentry gun and use the ingredients to craft a combat parachute to easily reach the enemy worm and enter the match as a winner. These are just a few examples, but I hope you see what I'm getting at and why I cannot show every single scenario. It will spoil the fun. Just like with any other topic, we will expand on this one in future videos if necessary. To wrap up this chapter, I'll leave a link in the description where you can learn how to get free crafting ingredients in every single ranked match. And no, it's not cheating. Knowing how many ingredients you need to craft weapons and how many you will get from dismantling them is very important information that can easily affect the outcome of every single ranked match. You don't want to learn all of this on the fly, and for that reason I created two sheets. The first one shows you how many ingredients you need to craft each weapon, and the other one shows you how many ingredients you'll get from dismantling each weapon, giving you a clearer picture for resource management. But before we get into that, we need to talk about crafting ingredients themselves. There are four types of crafting ingredients. Boogie Special Sauce, Sticky Donkey Paste, Banana Bomb Seed, and Tear of a Worm. In this chapter, we'll analyze them through the lens of the pro skin, used in ranked matches. You'll start each match with some of these ingredients already available in your arsenal, while the rest can be obtained by dismantling existing weapons. Boogie Special Sauce is the most common ingredient, and you'll need it for crafting every single weapon. Luckily, it's also the easiest to obtain. You'll always get it from dismantling any weapon. Sticky donkey paste is rarer, you need some for crafting every weapon, but you won't get it from dismantling every weapon. Banana bomb seed is an extremely rare ingredient, and you'll only have one in your arsenal at the beginning of the match. Since we're talking about the pro scheme, you won't be able to obtain a second one during a match. This ingredient is required for advanced weapons and tools, such as the holy hand grenade, charged battery or jetpack, but more on this later. Tear of a worm is the rarest ingredient, and you won't have any during ranked matches. It's required for super weapons such as Armageddon, OMG Strike or Concrete Dunkey, which are not available in the pro scheme of ranked matches. With that said, let's take a look at the sheets for crafting cuts and ingredients you can obtain from dismantling weapons. When we look at the cost of all available weapons in the pro scheme, the first thing we notice is that they can be divided into two groups, those that don't require the banana bomb seed ingredient and those that do. As we already mentioned, you'll have access to multiple boogie special sauces and sticky donkey paste ingredients, and you can get more from dismantling weapons. However, you'll only have one banana bomb seed ingredient, and you won't be able to obtain more through either dismantling weapons or collecting dropped crates. For this reason, you'll only craft one weapon from the second group during a match. Some of these weapons are in your arsenal by default, without the need to craft them first, and you can take a closer look at them on this sheet. Some weapons, however, you'll only have if you craft them. This sheet shows you which ones fall into that category. On the other hand, weapons from the first group can be crafted multiple times, and we will focus on them in the rest of this section. As you already know, there are weapons such as the bazooka, which have an infinite amount of ammunition, and since there is no need to craft those, we will filter them out of the picture. Of course, some weapons are available by default in your arsenal without the need to craft them first, and here is a look at them. Last but not least, here is a look at all the weapons from the first group that you can craft multiple times during a single ranked match, but that are only available if you craft them first. Dismantling a weapon will always give you fewer crafting ingredients than were required to craft the same weapon. For example, crafting a shotgun requires two boogie special sauces and two sticky donkey pastes, but if you dismantle it, you'll only get two boogie special sauces. The first thing you'll notice is that no matter which weapon you dismantle, you won't get a second banana bomb seed ingredient. Before we start dissecting the list, you'll also notice that I've included two only craftable weapons on this list, Dodgy Foam Battery and Unwanted Present. The reason is simple, these weapons can be collected in drop crates, and are therefore obtainable without the need to spend your only banana bomb seed to get them. The third thing you'll notice is that all weapons can be divided into two groups, those that won't give you sticky noki paste ingredients, and those that will. Let's start with the first one. Dismantling a weapon from the first group will only give you two boogie special sauces, and that's it. However, you'll notice that there are weapons on this list that have an infinite amount of ammunition. No matter how many times you dismantle them, you'll still have them available in your arsenal. Dismantling those weapons is an excellent way to get free crafting ingredients. For this reason, we'll remove from the list all those that you have in limited numbers in your arsenal. The second group is a list of weapons, with a limited number of uses, that you can dismantle to get sticky donkey paste. With a few exceptions, the number is always the same, especially for sticky donkey paste. Having all this knowledge will help you with resource management in every ranked match. 
but the decision of which weapon to dismantle and which to craft will always depend on your strategy and tactics. We already briefly touched on this topic in the previous chapter, but since it's highly circumstantial, it's not possible to cover all available combinations and options. Nevertheless, knowing what you can get from dismantling a certain weapon, and what you need to spend for crafting another, is a strong foundation on which you can build your strategies and tactics, and plan every single attack. The last and the best dismantling advice I can give you is not to dismantle more than you need. Four to six sticky donkey paste are enough for crafting any weapon, and obtaining additional ingredients should be done only if you are certain that you need them for crafting other weapons. Knowing all these tips will help you in every single rank match. Proper resource management will allow you to always have the necessary ingredients for the weapons you need to turn the match in your favor or end it as the winner. Don't forget to check out the next episode of the Into the Rank Match series. Ask questions in the comment section and suggest new topics for future videos. Viper, out.